So one of the first things we're going to do is to um, take off the outer frames of the S8. For those of you who don't know and who haven't opened up the case yet, I can't imagine any of you would have the case and not do that, but these external panels basically clip on. So all you need to do is to pop them off, like so. Sometimes the clips are a little stiff. If they're stiff, you can just use a flathead screwdriver like so, to kind of insert somewhere, preferably at the back, and you'll see you can just pop it off that way. Um, yeah, try and avoid doing it right on the front somewhere where if you scratch the paint, you're gonna see some damage. So with the radiators, we're gonna be mounting them at the top. You can, of course, mount them in other places, but that's what the kit is designed for, because I think it's the easiest place to do it. We turn the case so you can see, you can now see there's a two, a double 360 mount. So you're gonna be mounting one 360 like he, this and another 360 like this. We're also gonna be orientating the ports of the radiator at the back of the case. Again, you can do it at the front, but it makes your life a little easier to put them at the back. Now, if you went ahead and followed my suggestion to get the drop-in mount, you'll notice that there will be two pieces to this top piece. One is the drop-in mount, and one is the internal frame. And there'll be three screws along each side that secure this to the internal frame. If you haven't, it's gonna make your life a little difficult, but really not that hard because Case Labs makes life so easy. So even a hard life with Case Labs is easier than a lot of other cases. So, let's get that unscrewed. We get our trusty Phillips head screwdriver and we're just going to undo these six screws taking care not to lose them or confuse them. So with the sixth screw you'll see the drop in mount comes out. Like I said if you didn't pay the extra $20 for this, this will be fixed in the internal frame and you can't get it out without taking the case apart. We wouldn't recommend taking the case apart and we'll show you what you'll have to do later. The last thing to do, um, so you don't lose your screws, there's going to be a lot of different screws here. Some are from EK, some of them are from Case Labs. You don't want to mix them up, um, so what I would do is just to screw these back into the case for now. You don't have to do them all the way. You don't have to do them tight. All right, so that's done. The next thing to do is to get out your radiators. The radiators will come in a box like this, green ends, and it will say EK Coolstream, Coolstream PE360 radiator on the front. Uh, you're going to undo this, it's going to be packaged in there, and you're going to take it out, and the screws that come with it. And the radiator is going to look a little something like this. Okay, so we've just gone ahead and removed this drop-in radiator mount. In addition, it's now a good time to go ahead and unbox a few things. We already talked about the radiators that come in the big white and green boxes. Go ahead and unbox both of those and remove all the packaging from the radiator so that they look like this. You'll have to make sure to remove the plastic plugs from these ports. In addition in the box you should find a variety of screws. There'll be short screws like this and there'll be short screws, I mean longer screws, that are about 30 millimeters long like this. Collect all of those from both packages. You'll also need a Allen key which looks like this. Um, and that's going to be used to tighten these screws. The next thing you're going to need are six fans. They come in also green and white packages that look like this. These are the Varda fans. So go ahead and open those up, remove the fans. Inside you'll also see a little bag of screws. Uh, we don't need these screws for the six fans we have. We only need it for one of the fans that we'll talk about later, the seventh fan. So go ahead and unbox your six fans. Lastly, we're also gonna need some of the fittings. The fittings come in little bags like these. 
and a wrapped for protection. So you're going to go ahead and remove those. And you're going to need four of the compression fittings. These are what the compression fittings look like. There's a screw thread on one end, a male screw thread, with a black o-ring around it. It's the o-ring that provides the waterproof seal. And you can go ahead and unscrew what's called the lock ring. The lock ring is what secures the tube to the barb, which is this part right here. So the first thing we're going to do is to mount the radiators to the drop-in mount. Now the drop-in mount is symmetric um, this way to this way, but you'll notice that the edge of the drop-in mount is raised up on one side. So we're going to take our radiator and we're going to place it so the ports are down on the table, like so. And we're going to take the other one and we're going to make sure the ports are also down but at the same end. So if you flip these up right now, you'll see the ports are at the top of the screen. So we're going to put those back down and we're going to take our drop in mount and we're going to place it on top. And we're going to make sure these edges are beveled up towards us. So they're going to, it's going to be flat and these four edge panels are just going to come up a little bit towards you. We're then going to take our short screws and we're going to start in the middle here with one radiator. And we're not going to tighten these down too tight. We're just going to loosely tighten them down. We're going to line them up these four center ones on one side and we're just going to lightly put them in. And when we've done those four, we're going to work our way to the outer edge. So this part we can speed up. And if things don't line up perfectly, you may just have to squeeze things a little, just massage them into place. You don't want to be forcing anything. So now you can see we have all 12 screws for one radiator in, but they're not thoroughly tightened down. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to do that later. We're then going to line up the next radiator and again start from the middle and work our way out. The thing to bear in mind is if you don't have the drop-in mount, you'll have to do this part at the end and you'll have to do everything else to the radiators individually and then attach the radiators at the end. Hopefully you got the drop-in mount. So now you've got all 24 screws in. Again, you don't want these tight. So now we can flip the drop-in mount over. The next thing you're going to do is to attach fittings to those ports. You're going to take a compression fitting, the one with the lock ring, and you're going to insert the male threaded section into the female threaded section of the 90 degree fitting, like so. And you're going to screw it down. It's going to be finger tight. It's not going to be so tight that you ruin the thread, but it's not going to be loose that it's going to come undone. Then you're going to attach it to these two uh, center ports. You're going to put one in each. So here's number one. Again, finger tight, not too tight. And you're going to point at the other port. You take another 90 degree fitting and the male of the compression goes in the female of the adapter. And then you screw it in like that. And then you're going to point the two heads together. We're going to put a little piece of tube to connect these. Then you take the remaining two fittings that we unboxed earlier, just regular compression fittings, and you're going to put them in the remaining two ports. These do not get adapters. These are just compression fittings. So now our fittings are in. That part is done. 
The next part is to attach your fans. You're going to take the Varda fan and you're going to position it on the radiator. We're going to start it at this end and you're going to put it with the label down. This means the fan will be running in push, which is slightly better than the other way around. You're going to put one of the longer screws that came with the radiator and you're just going to finger tighten it down. And you're going to do the far corner, line it up, finger tighten it down. And the same for the other two. Again, you're not going to tighten these up just yet. You're just going to finger tighten them down. And you're going to go all the way around and do those. You want to make sure that your cables come out uh, towards this side. Remember to be consistent with the direction of the fans. You don't want any labels sticking up. Now that you've done three, it would be a good idea to tidy up the cables. In the pack, you'll also get some fan cable splitters. There's going to be a single fan header on one end and then three um, split versions. You're going to take each of the split versions and you're going to plug them into the fan header itself, like so. Now, this is not quite the right version. This is a three pin version. You'll be getting a four pin version, so they will work. Mine doesn't. But you're going to connect all three fans from one radiator to one three to one splitter. And if you have some zip ties, now would be a great time to kind of tidy these cables up. Once you've done one set of fans, you're going to do the second set of fans. And again, this time you're going to align the cable down the middle channel here towards this end away from the ports. So again we're going to speed this up as we screw these down. Again we're not going to tighten them just yet. As always with screw threads you want to make sure you're not stripping anything. If you feel like you're forcing a screw thread in that's probably not good. Again we're wanting to be consistent with the direction of the cables and the direction of, of the fans. Now that you've mounted the other three fans, you can go ahead and also connect your three-way splitter to the three fans on this side. So then you're just going to have two outputs, um, one for each bank of fans. Again, at that point, you may want to go through and zip tie some things together just to clean up the wiring. Now that we have all six mounted, we can go around on both sides and tighten every single screw. For that, you're going to need your Allen key that came with the radiators. There's a few Allen keys around, so you want to make sure that you've got the right size. If you use the wrong size, you may end up stripping either the Allen key itself or the screw head. Again, these don't need to be super tight. If you're flexing the plastic of the fan frame, you've gone too far. You just want to make sure it's reasonably firm. You know, you don't want it to come loose, but you also don't want to strip anything. The last thing to do before we're kind of done with this section for a little while is to attach a little piece of tube between these two right angle fittings. So to do that, we're going to open up these compression fittings and remove the lock ring. After we've removed both of them, we point the fittings back towards each other. We take our section of tube and you're just going to run it up to the edge of, you know, as far up the barb as you can, just to the side of it and then you're going to measure off to the other side exactly how far you need. You can just measure this with a ruler if you want. But I just kind of line it up 
and it usually works. You're then going to cut the tube by taking a sharp, non serrated knife and a chopping board and being careful. You're just taking it slow and working your way through the tube. If you have a tube cutter, that of course makes your life easier. But this is perfectly acceptable. And you can end up with a very nice cut. You're then going to take one lock ring. You're going to put it over the tube, like so. You're going to double check the length is correct. It should mount to the sh shoulders here just fine. You're going to twist off to the side just to get the tube on. You're going to put the tube on as far as it can go. You can see it's up to the shoulder there. And then you're going to twist the lock ring on. Now, of course, the lock ring only works one way. It'll be obvious if you have it the wrong way. I'm going to tighten it down. Then you're going to take your other lock ring, slide it on, and then you're just going to get the barb to go inside the tube. If you ever have difficulty getting tube onto a barb, you can use a little bit of hot water and that'll soften up the tube and make it easier to get on. Again, you should see this tube coming up to the shoulder here. There may be a slight gap. Here it's about a half millimeter and that's close enough. You just don't want a big gap such that the tube isn't on top of the barb. You can then start screwing it down and as you tighten the lock ring here, notice that I'm holding the tube here. That's because as you tighten this one, the tube may also want to turn. And in turn, as the tube turns, it would undo the other side that you've already tightened up. So you just want to hold it to stop it from doing that. As you do this, you'll hear kind of rocking noise there. That's the, uh, the fitting itself, the 90 degree adapter, and that's okay. There's a bit of play in these EK fittings and it's fine. So don't worry about that. So you can see a nice crisp joint we have here with the tube, keeps it a very nice clean look. We can now put this piece to the side and work on the rest of the installation.